Okay, something a little different from what we've uh, already heard today. I'm not going to be talking about uh, climate change and how our world has been destroyed. I'm going to um, talk about future technology. I know, um, I think it was Joe Monroe, there he is. He was talking about technology earlier, and um, this is kind of a focused in on a specific technology, but I think it's you know, quite interesting. So, The future of multi-rotors. Now, for those of you who don't know, multi-rotor, one of these things. Um, it's basically a helicopter sort of thing, four blades um, on a horizontal plane. Can move up, down, left, right, forwards, backwards, and rotate. So quite very versatile. Um, so what is a multi-rotor? Well, they can be used for just about anything these days. They um, offer a great platform for uh, cameras to be placed underneath and other such things. They've got um, GPS built into them so they can hold their position. They can be programmed to fly anywhere you want so you don't actually have to be physically controlling them. Um, the possibilities are endless. They can vary from extremely small, like that one you see here, all the same fundamental um, components inside but just a lot smaller. You can get to massive ones like this that can hold cameras you know, as big as the ones that are here today. Um, that can be used for you know, really high-end uh, aerial photography, things like that. Or you can get some other interesting ones that people do, um, like stuffed animals. Um, I'm not quite sure if I, I'm into that sort of thing, but um, basically, the essential components can be put onto any platform. People have made toolboxes fly and chairs fly and things like that. But there is uh, just one problem with using quadcopters as a future technology. Everyone thinks that we're doing this. Everyone thinks that anyone who owns a quadcopter or anyone who wants to use one is sat at a military base trying to spy on people and fire missiles at people. And they're not really trusted. They think they're unsafe. They think they're um, invasion of privacy and other things like that, which I disagree. Um, Yes, they could be used to bad effect, and people do sometimes use them in that way. But the possibilities that they offer for future um, applications, I feel, outweighs the uh, negativity that surrounds them. Um, these are just a few things that uh, quadcopters can do. Um, aerotography. This is a, um, a consumer one, so any of you guys could buy it if you've got £3,000 lying around. Um, and that's basically your professional level um, 4K kind of aerial photography platform. It's got GPS, it holds itself, it can fly for up to 20 minutes. Just a really good platform for capturing really high-end videography. Uh, surveying, not one that many people think of. Um, that's actually not a quadcopter, but it was the only decent image I could find. Um, what if they could be used to go around earthquake sites, buildings that may be structurally unsafe. The cameras on there, extremely manoeuvrable, would be perfect for surveying buildings and uh, protects the lives of those that risk them going into buildings, having a look at the surveying to um, figure out whether they're safe or not. Deliveries, I'm sure you've all heard of Amazon's plans on um, carrying parcels around to you rather than in vans. I think it's quite an interesting one. I can't see it working quite yet, but um, if they can get it to work, it'd be very good. Um, yeah, just really efficient, and uh, obviously, I suppose I've got to talk about environment at some point. Um, it's going to reduce the CO2 emissions of vans and lorries and transport, things like that, as they're all battery operated at the moment. Uh, medical care, ambulances, as quick as they are and as fast as they're allowed to drive, there is traffic. Um, these would be great. They could fly through the air. Lower than aircraft, so they're not going to interfere with that sort of thing, but high enough to get over everything else. And deliver, you know, defibrillators really fast or just basic medical needs in an emergency, things like that. Uh, farming. Uh, what if quadcopters could be used to uh, sustain crops? Um, at the moment, though, you see those huge things that spray um, on the crops. What if you could get a, a fleet of quadcopters to do it for you? and uh, maybe even do it quicker. And you can obviously pre-program their flight paths um, to make the most efficient use of them. Accessible to everyone. 
Um, quadcopters, a couple of years ago, not many people knew who they were, who they were, what they were. Um, but nowadays, you can, every, anyone can buy them. They range in price from the tiny little ones that you can buy for 20 quid to the massive ones that you know, cost about 15,000 pounds. So really, anyone can access them, um, especially me, because I took it upon myself to, um, I don't know, I was really interested, actually, in what I could do with it. And I didn't know anyone else who had one. So I was like, why don't I be the first one to build one? And this one you see here, and on the board here, is actually one that I built myself. Um, I sourced all the parts I needed from online. I uh, found some plans and some YouTube videos that helped me construct it. And uh, I came up with this. This is basically a kind of medium to small size quadcopter. Um, it's got some quite advanced features in it. It's got GPS holding, so when it flies up, even if it's in wind, so the wind's coming from over here, it will tilt itself into the wind to stop it from being taken away. Um, I've got some quite advanced materials like carbon fibre propellers, you can see up there. Um, I can attach a GoPro to the front to uh, transmit video back to where I'm controlling it from. Um, what else? Oh yeah, if the battery gets too low and I'm not aware of it, uh, it will actually fly itself to back where it took off which um, saves it crashing out the sky and potentially uh, harming someone. Some more images there. That black box you can see there, uh, that's basically its brain. Everything goes on in there. Uh, there's another brain in the middle actually, but that deals with just the um, holding it still. So I thought it's all very well me telling you about it, but I thought I could probably give you a little demo. <laughs> this screen. So right now, it's um, warming itself up. All the electronics have got to warm up, so they're optimal conditions. Um, I'm, we're indoors, so I won't get any satellites. So that's why I'm not going to go mental, because it's not as stable as it usually would be. Um, but if I were outdoors, this is when it would be gathering satellite connections. And it can gather up to about uh, 16, I think, 16 different satellites. So if you imagine a straight line from 16 different satellites down to this one thing, it can hold itself pretty stable. So I'm just going to... So you can see how stable it is in the air. Um, really not. I hope that demonstrated how. Um, let me just put this back on. I hope that demonstrated how versatile you can see these things are. You can imagine that being coming right up close to a building um, that needed surveying, perhaps, and having complete control. You could almost get this close. And I know these days, actually, this hasn't got it because I don't have that much money. But um, they've got, you know, proximity sensors on them, so. Um, it eliminates the danger of coming close to either people or objects. Um, so personally, I think this is the future of um, technology and a much more efficient one where we don't have to use fossil fuels and uh, big cumbersome uh, transport vehicles and other such things. So uh, thank you for listening. I think I... Yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs>